This video focuses on managing and tracking sales tax in QuickBooks Online. I'm in my client's QuickBooks Online file from QuickBooks Online Accountant, as you can see here. And Simple Start Essentials and Plus all have the ability to track sales tax. And it's not even a preference you have to turn on. You're not going to see it on your products and services list, per se. Yet you can add a default sales tax rate to a customer. And be, I'll show you some reports and even how to make a liability adjustment, how to pay the sales tax and how it tracks it. But you'll see in the left-hand panel, there's a taxes menu item. And we'll just go to the sales tax center, if you will. And if you've, it's the first time you're coming here, here is where you would just kind of turn on sales tax. You can add tax rates here over on the left. So this is related taxes. First off, you, know, you have your sales tax owed and then your recent sales tax payments. And you can record a tax payment here or view the sales tax liability report. And there's a couple other reports as well to deal with that. For me, it's been defaulting to showing by month and for current year and the start of the year is January. I believe that's just how it is and it's a cruel basis. Let's go to add edit tax rates and agencies. So here are my rates. I even have a combined rate or sales tax group item, if you will. You know, QuickBooks Online does support that. We, we updated and enhanced sales tax about two years ago, maybe even more now. And if you have sales tax in your desktop, it converts over smoothly to QuickBooks Online. The only thing to call out, I think, and I'll show that on the sales tax liability report, but there's no non-taxable sales column. And that's about the only difference I've found with sales tax between desktop and QuickBooks Online. So, you know, you can just add a new tax rate. I'll just show you that. Put in the tax rate. You can do a combined rate here. And just add other components if you like. You have to choose the agency name. It is going to go to the sales tax, you know, liability account by default. Um, I can't choose another payable account just like you can't in desktop either. Um, and it's going to go to that particular agency name and put in the rate there. So a single rate or combined rates there. I think if we were to just edit my combined rate, you can see, you know, I got my Collin County rate. I got the McKinney local rate. So it's combined at 7.50, pretty easy there. And then just looking at, say, my normal sales tax rate. Also, you can edit your sales tax settings. If you charge sales tax, obviously it's yes. And what's the default sales tax just in general when you go, when, when an item is taxable that you're selling um, or a customer has a you know default item, um, it'll default to the sales tax rate. Maybe I'll just do the Collin County rate from now on. So any invoice or sales receipt, it's going to default to that, although I'll have a drop down arrow that I can choose, right? Just like you can with desktop. And then the same same boxes that I remember from desktop too, mark all new customers taxable, mark all new products and services taxable, and click save. You might check or uncheck those depending on their impact. And then the actual sales tax center, the agency name, and it breaks it down by month, the gross sales, taxable sales, the tax amount, and then the balance that I have. And I really have nothing for the tax authority, but for Collin County, I probably have some, you know, and I can go ahead and pay January if I want, record tax payment, and the payment date change that tax period ending and if i wanted to make an adjustment you would just click the box to make the adjustment because in the desktop there's actually a, an adjustment window for sales tax so in quickbooks online the record tax payment window has the ability to make an adjustment where you can check the box put in the amount you know let's say it's a uh, ten dollars or positive or, or negative a reason and then you can choose the adjustment account okay, and that'll make an adjustment that you could apply in the the, this record tax payment window. Now, if I want to pay all of these, right, I haven't been paying them, which is a shame. I should have been. But if I want to pay all of them, you just go ahead and close the individual amounts and I can just click record tax payment and then I can put the 115 if you want to. Other than that, you're going to be recording individual payments. So we'll go back and do the January 15 and I'm going to do a payment date made it for February, right, and record the tax payment. And that's how easy it is. It'll drop off this list and then come down here, and here's my tax payment. Now, let's look at the customer record. Go to Customers, and I'll drill in on AMSBA Online Accountants, and click the Edit menu. So both in a customer and the tax info, you can choose the default rate. Or if I go to Gear Icon Products and Services and go into, say, my Guild D25 item, you know, is it taxable or not? And that's the key thing. And then when I'm going to a sales receipt or an invoice, you know, I have the taxable field down below, subtotal, and I can choose the particular item. So let's just go back to a recent one, and then we can look below. And if it was taxable, right, then there's my tax amount, and I can choose the actual rate, you know, say it's Collin County. So it's 7.5%. So $0.38 cents on the $5.
Now let's look at reporting. When you go to all reports under reports, you got managed sales tax, and there's three tax reports. Now sales tax reports. There's that. You can drill in and see the transactions if you want. And there's also the taxable sales detail report based on the items. And then there's your taxable sales summary report. And then you could, you know, I can drill in. Obviously, I do a lot with lawn mowing. There's the guild I just sold, but the lawn mowing there. And these are all the invoices and their tax amounts, or their amounts, I should say, the balance that led to that. And again, just going back to the sales tax liability report, and I'm going to do all dates. Just hope I have a little more data in there. Now, there's just not the non-taxable sales column. You know, I have the non-tax down here and the amount here is a row, but um, there's not the column per se. And, and that's essentially tracking and managing sales tax within QuickBooks Online.